have to the organization. But to big organizations like ours, the system integration testing seems to be unavoidable. So why do you look there with the methodology which is optional? Um, precisely because of what you said, that it is unavoidable. But unfortunately, a lot of times it is avoided. <laughs> um, we, we've, we've seen this with, with clients in a similar scope as, as yours here, <laughs> the, the anonymous scope. But just for people on the phone, this is an organization that is very, very large. Um, you know, I see you have multinational operations, right? So, but large, large financial, you know, large suite of applications, probably more than 100 applications in your data center, right? So. We have seen clients that have that scale of complexity, yet they are nobody's responsible for system integration. And furthermore, they even have stuff that's not even built in-house, but is being delivered by external organizations dropped into their data center. Nobody's responsible for the integration testing of that. It gets acceptance tested based on a set of siloed requirements when it comes in, but nothing else. And then people are shocked when stuff doesn't work together. You know? So that's, that's the reason that I wanted to be real clear about this is that, that um, a lot of what we have to do as testers is not just about testing at the end of a development life cycle that's focused on developing a particular set of features for a particular set of applications or a single application but rather is about how an entire suite of applications, perhaps a hundred or more in a data center in some cases, work together. And this isn't just limited to IT organizations such as yours. This is also for um, enterprise software companies like our other client CA that I mentioned or uh, companies like Microsoft that develop large, complex, mass market products. You know, the expectation more and more is everything works together, right? I mean, you, you have a smartphone, right? And you expect to be able to go off to some website and do telephone banking on on your phone, right? Or, or you know, web-based banking on your phone. And what's going to happen when you go, oh, I've got Safari on this thing, and guess what? There's no flash, right? So that's why I wanted to be really clear about this. This is this is unavoidable. It is something we have to think about organizationally, and it gets even more complicated when stuff is being built by outside vendors. So, thank you for pointing that out. We have other questions in the audience before I... Let me go to the submitted questions. We've got some here. A minute to... fun. Hey, uh, go to uh, you know, Citrix changed their interface at one point and uh, it used to be that the questions were really easy to figure out and now it's just about impossible. Get in here. All right. Whoops. All right. So we've got a question from somebody here. Jim asks, uh, you make an excellent point about making objective evaluations of staff skills. Can you suggest any tools, methods to evaluate and score the skills? Okay, so that's related to um, this area here, skills, the test team, and skills management. So, um, yes, the, the approach to doing this is uh, first you do a task analysis, which is just, it's a fancy name for saying you sit down as a manager and you look at over the last n number of projects that we've done, however many you've worked on, five, ten, whatever, what are the tasks that we had to carry out? Now this is going to be a lot easier if you have something like a Microsoft project uh, file or other sort of Gantt chart that allows you to go through and review the tasks, right? And you come up with a common list of tasks that you had to carry out, things like development of test cases for particular areas of the application or performance testing or setting up 
particular kinds of environments, right? So you need to be specific enough about the tasks uh, to actually identify the skills required for them, but you want to try to do it as much as possible in a project-independent way. Then, for each one of those tasks, you ask yourself, what skills would somebody need to have to be able to do this task effectively? Right? And now you're able to, to generate a list of skills that's driven by what you actually do. See, one of the mistakes I think people sometimes make when they're thinking about skills is they do this sort of blue sky exercise, this perfect world thing of, oh, what would the perfect tester be? Um, what skills would the perfect tester have? Who cares? You know, what skills do you actually need to have in your team, right? Now, you, you, you can do a little bit of forward looking on this and say, well, here, there are some skills that I haven't needed on previous projects, but I am going to need on these upcoming projects based on these additional tasks I'm going to have to do. But it really all should be task driven. It shouldn't just be, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had testers who knew X, right? And then, so, so based on, on that, you now have this list of skills that you, you can tie back, trace back to particular tasks okay, this is based on what is actually needed. And then you can come up with a way of, of scoring those. Now, one of the simple scale that I've used before is a zero through three rating, where, where zero is person knows nothing about this. Right? They just have no, no knowledge whatsoever in this particular skill area. A one would mean they have some basic knowledge and they can carry out simple tasks that require this skill if they have someone available to help them. You can go and ask questions when they get stuck. A two would mean this person is generally competent to carry out tasks that require this skill. Every now and then they get stuck, but for the most part they're able to work independently and without uh, daily guidance, right? And a three would be this person is a real expert. They really, really know this stuff. Now, there's some amount of subjectivity there, but as a manager, I mean, you know the difference between those four scores when you see it, right? You, you know the person that, you know, if I have a question about X, this is the person I go ask, right? That's your expert, right? So, you know, you can, you can sit down and, and go through and, and score those uh, for, for your team. And then depending on whether you're looking at a generalized team or a specialized team, then that depends on how you're going to identify the weaknesses, right? The generalized team, you want to have a lot of twos for everybody, right? Like you, so you take a spreadsheet, which is a good way to do this. You've got your list of skills in the spreadsheet. You've got your people across the top of the spreadsheet. You'd want to just see this big field of twos. That would be the perfect generalized team. Everybody's able to work independently on any task. They have a perfectly generalized set of skills. Specialized team, what you would have is you would have clusters of threes, right? People who are specialized would be experts in particular areas, but in the other areas, they might just have ones or twos or maybe even zeros. Okay? So you can set up a spreadsheet for this fairly simply. And, and do it that way. And that's, that's just, I think, the best way to do it. Uh, I wish I could claim to have originated that, but that's just a fairly straightforward human resources technique, uh, skills inventory. Um, but it is quite effective. All right, so thank you, Jim, for the uh, question. Um, I have a question here from a number of questions here. A question here from Linda. Hi, I'm waiting for the webinar. Uh, hopefully you're not. <laughs> hopefully you've, you've heard it. Um, here's another question for Linda. How long should I wait? Well, if you're not hearing anything by 1 p.m. Central Time, there's something wrong. Uh, <laughs> okay, we got a question here from John uh, Steinmetz. John, I hope you're still on the line. Um, Sounds like you may believe that Agile is conceptually at odds with a comprehensive approach to testing. Is that correct? Um, no, that's not. Um, and I think that was partly 